having Emmanuel Macron uh, uh, for the second round of the election was not a surprise. But even having Marine Le Pen, in fact, uh, was not so sure because in the last couple of months, uh, if you have a look at the surveys, uh, there were a couple of scenarios to know who will be the second candidate facing Emmanuel Macron for the second uh, round of the presidential election. But what is true, uh, true is also that in the last month, uh, Marine Le Pen in the polls has increased of 6.5%, uh, whereas both the left and the right really never uh, took off. Uh, so that was really uh, something that has been kind of like uh, decided, established in the last uh, a month. And also what is true is the mediatic bubble uh, around Eric Zemmour, the former journalist, kind of exploded in the last couple of weeks, uh, which let, in fact, the whole far right uh, landscape for Marine Le Pen in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, he literally was left with just 7% of the vote. So a total fizzer, as you point out. Uh, why is she picking up votes? Uh, we've got the two of them now, the two candidates at 51% for Macron, 49% for Le Pen, far closer than may have been predicted. Yeah, that's true. And uh, that's also true to remind that, in fact, in only 20 years' time, since tw uh, tw uh, 2022, in fact, uh, the score of the far right at the French presidential election uh, went from... Uh, 80 against 20% at the second uh, round of an election to 60% versus 45 uh, years ago. And now the projection, as you're saying, is 48 versus 52. So what's interesting in politics is not only the picture at the tea time, but also the progression, uh, the trend uh, that we can uh, draw. So that's the first thing. The second thing um, is obviously like when Macron uh, completely uh, made, exploded the classic two-party system with the right against left uh, divide five years ago, no one was expecting to have now not a two-party system anymore, but a three-party system. Because if you have a look uh, at the scores, in fact, uh, with the first uh, turn of the French election, uh, the center and center right is about 33%, one third of the voters. The extreme right is about another third and the extreme left is about another third. So in fact, Emmanuel Macron uh, created another uh, divide within the French uh, political system. Yeah, that is so fascinating. And the key question will be where the far left vote goes to in this runoff election. Um, would the far right pick up some of the vote from the far left? That's a very good question. In fact, it, um, it's uh, about what the two candidates will focus in the next um, uh, couple of days. For Emmanuel Macron, obviously, it's uh, about attracting uh, voters from the left because on the right side, there is no one uh, anymore for him to attract. The second thing for Emmanuel Macron is try to convince the person who did not go voting because the turnout is slightly inferior to the one five years ago. And the third thing for Emmanuel Macron is really to prepare the debate uh, that will happen four days before the election, the 20th of April, because Emmanuel Macron knows he was very good against Marine Le Pen five years ago. And to answer your question for Marine Le Pen, the first thing is really to solidify uh, uh, the attractiveness she can have for the extreme right people and the right people. But as you mentioned, it's also to find some common grounds to convince far left people to join her. It won't be about the program, but it will be about the fact that as the extreme left, the extreme right is also an anti-system party that does not want to go as it has been for 60 years in France. Uh, and the third thing for Marine Le Pen that will be a bit hard for her is also to uh, forget and uh, try to not uh, being the consequence of uh, what the relationship was with her and Russia in the last couple of uh, years, because there are a lot of suspicion about uh, the fact that she received like Russian uh, financing for her campaign. Yeah, that is interesting. So uh, Macron could play that up. And of course, he has been playing quite a statesman-like role on the international stage during the Ukraine um, invasion. Um, but he has remained fairly unpopular domestically because he's challenged a number of key issues that uh, many in France are not happy about. Yes, exactly. We have to remind that, in fact, Emmanuel Macron began his mandate with the Yellow Vest crisis. And one year after the beginning of the Yellow Vest crisis, his popularity fall uh, until 20% only 
of satisfaction among the population, which, which was the lowest score since 20 years uh, in France. And all through his uh, mandate, he went from some domestic crisis to other crises, um, um, with the pension reform, for example, but also with a couple of uh, uh, bills that he did not manage um, uh, to vote at the parliament, such as the police one. Uh, so that's true on the domestic scene. Macron has, uh, is much more unpopular than he is on the international scene. But also, we do not have to forget that to win an election, it won't be about the international uh, scene and what you have done uh, for France at the uh, international level, but it will be about you know the day-to-day -day, uh, life of every French citizen. So probably uh, uh, Marine Le Pen will play a, a bit this like music about you know you were good on the international scene, but what did you do for the daily life of? Uh, of your citizens in France. Yeah, and, and has he, to that point, got a, a plan for the next five years? So he already drew a couple of lines for the next uh, five years. So, for example, uh, mentioning that he didn't have time because uh, of the pandemic, because of a couple of uh, other crises, um, to solve the pension issue. So it's something that he wants to do. And he already mentioned that um, he will postpone the age you can retire in France. Uh, so that's the first uh, thing of his uh, program. The second thing um, is also about, you know, attracting again foreign investment in France. He began to do it during the, uh, the first mandate. He really wants to uh, keep on developing uh, that. In fact, after Bre Brexit, Emmanuel Macron wants really to be the place to be for foreign investment within continental uh, Europe. Um, but uh, once again, uh, the issue with Emmanuel Macron and his uh, economic uh, 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 policies is that the macro uh, indicators can be good. For example, the unemployment rate is quite low. It's about 70 point, uh, seven, sorry, 0.4%, uh, which is historically very low. Uh, but in terms of micro uh, indicators and what people can feel on the ground, uh, there's a bit of discrepancy. And this is really where Emmanuel Macron will have to play uh, uh, if he wants to be uh, elected, and that he will need to play during the debate with uh, Marine Le Pen the 20th of April. Yeah, we look forward to that. Good to talk. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. Thanks a lot.